All right, so this is just going to be a quick start to finish demonstration of my aggressive retopology or brute force retopology. So if we hit F4 on this x outfit, we will see that it has these poles right here. They're going to cause problems. I'm going to show you what those problems are and then how I fix them. But to begin, we need to get this model from triangles to quads, and we're going to use 3ds Max quantification to do that. However, we need to do a little bit of work to help the quantifier out. Otherwise, it's going to be not very smart, and we're going to have to do a lot more work than we really should have to. So we're going to start by selecting all of the vertices and re-welding everything because the exiting lower importer splits the mesh into individual pieces. And now we need to correct the smoothing. So we're going to apply a 20 degree auto smooth. And then this particular mesh, these bits right here, we need to adjust their smoothing manually. So we're just going to select them. And we're going to give them all smoothing group two, which is the same as this, so that it's all together in one piece. Everything else should be good enough. So now we just need to come down here. We need to give all of this area down here, smoothing group three. And now we need to go ahead and we need to run the smoothing group escalator script, which I will provide. This will make the uh, quadrifier a bit less stupid. Now we're going to bring up the listener and we're going to run the command escalate smoothing groups by UV elements dollar sign. And then once that's done, we're going to convert this to an editable poly. And then we're going to run split mesh by smoothing groups dollar sign. So what that will do is it will make the quadrifier a bit more intelligent so it won't cross boundaries for textures or for the mesh. So now we quadrify, bit F4, and we can see that it actually does a pretty decent job for the most part. We can see that it fucks up a little bit right here, so we're just going to quickly fix these edges. So Control z in edge mode to bring back the edges, and we're going to deselect the edges that it's incorrectly quadrifying. And then we're going to set the edges that it should be quantified. All right. And then we see that this edge right here doesn't want it to solve. So we're just going to do another high precision weld, 0 0.001. And now we can dissolve that edge. There we go. All right. So that is a pretty good quantification. I think that will definitely work as our base. So let's go ahead and let's commit to that. And now we're going to see what exactly those poles will end up doing for us. So we're going to come over here. We're going to apply a mesh smooth. We are going to turn on smoothing groups materials. And we're going to turn off isolene display. And if we crank it up to two iterations, we can immediately see. We can't really see it too terribly badly. But you can sort of see that it's creating these bumps. And if we were to come over here and we were throwing edit, uh, if we come over here and throw an edit mesh on, and we were to select those poles, and we were to do a soft select, and then we were to throw on an aggressive relapse, which is something that you would do while under the course of fitting, we will see that the bumps start to get significantly more pronounced. So let's go ahead and let's retopologize this outfit and solve this issue. So we're back to our quadrification. What we're going to do is we're going to retopologize this and we're going to get rid of these poles. So we're going to look at it and we're going to see that the uh, curvature really starts right here. So we're just going to select these. And we're going to retopologize all across the bottom as well. And we're just going to select all of the faces that we're going to want to end up retopologizing. All right, so we have the faces that we want to end up doing this to selected. So now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, activate a slice plane. We're going to scale this down. And then we're just going to move it forward a bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to adjust this and we're going to use these horizontal edges right here as our guides. So we're just going to line it up right there. You can see as I move this up and down, 
this horizontal line right here moves with it. So we're just going to line that up with these edges. We're going to slice. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the closer you get it, the easier it'll be. And don't worry about the fact that the geometry starts to look a little weird. Trust me, it's going to get a whole lot worse before it gets better. All right, there we go. So with that done, we're going to turn off the slice plane. We're going to invert our selection. We are going to hide all of these uh, faces. Then we're going to go to edge mode. We are going to invert our selection. And then we're just going to quickly deselect everything around these edges. Don't be afraid to be a bit overly generous. You're going to have to do some selections again. But I have found that this is the most reliable and quickest way to do this. All right. And then we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to select all the edges that we do not want to keep. All right, so at this point, the only edges that should not be selected are the outermost edges and the edges that we added with the horizontal slice planes. At this point, we're going to come over to Polygon. We're going to return everything, go back to the edge mode, and remember where I said that it's going to get worse before it gets better? This is where it gets worse. Now we're going to backspace to dissolve all of those edges. The mesh looks absolutely terrible now, but you're just going to have to trust me. So at this point, we're going to go to vertices, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start reconnecting the verticals. So I always start down the center. Let me set that to something more useful. And then we just select the vertices that we want to connect to make our vertical bars, which will be these. And then we will hit the connect, and that creates that edge. And we're going to keep doing that with all of these vertices. Some of these meshes will be a bit easier to see the best pattern compared to others. There's going to be a fair bit of eyeballing and I find that in general you're not going to get perfectly symmetrical mesh and you'll see how as I do that some of this gets better and then others get worse. Again, don't worry about what the rest of the mesh is doing. You have to have faith in the system. So yes, as I found in my experience that you're not going to get perfectly symmetrical topology, but that is just fine because we're going to end up manipulating the topology so much anyways that it doesn't really matter that much. I'll go ahead and I'll connect these. And again, there's just going to be a lot of guesswork involved, a lot of eyeballing it, and just best, best guesses is what you think is the best solution. Sometimes Going from the top down works better, sometimes bottom up works better, and sometimes sort of meeting in the middle works best. All that really matters is we go ahead and we reconnect these vertical edges, which will help us regain some of the structure that we lost when we uh, deleted all those inner edges. All right. So now we've got our grid of horizontal and vertical done. We can see that our triangle or uh, our faces are still pretty fucked up. And that is because of all of these unlinked vertices. So the next step is to just dissolve those vertices. So I'm just going to start over here. I'm just going, I'm going to make sure that uh, ignore back faces is on. And then we're just going to go through, we're just going to select every vertice that's not connected to anything. And then we're just going to dissolve them. All right, we can see in this case that we ended up deleting some uh, important faces. That's just fine. We can just select them and we can just recreate them with the connect. Go. And then we're just going to continue going through and we're just going to delete all these unconnected vertices. And we'll reconnect any faces that we added to accidentally destroy as we did before. 
3ds max is actually really good at maintaining the uvs so it's not a problem if you accidentally delete an edge like that you can easily recreate it with no penalty and you can see as we do this that the quality of the faces immediately improves and it's starting to look like an actually feasible mesh accidentally deleted more than I should have there that's interesting let me just uh pro z there we go that was a bit too zealous of my selections apparently even with ignore back facing on all right well we're gonna we're gonna pretend that never happened see these are all really close together I'm just going to web a lot of them together and you can see right here and this is really the next step is we're just going to go ahead we're going to go along these edges and we're just going to weld all these edges together because remember we made our cuts really close to the edges so now we're just going to go want to go and make sure that everything is welded together all right now, just a quick look over, and we can see that the retopologization is almost complete. There we go. And now, with a quick look over, we can see that the retopologization is complete. So now we can go ahead and we can make it higher poly. First thing I do want to do is I want to get these on the, so the same smoothing group, just so that they will behave better. So that needs to be 15. Needs to be one. Four. There we go. Perfect. So now we can go ahead. We can do the same thing we did before. Where we apply a mesh smooth. We're going to turn on materials and smoothing groups. We're going to turn off isolene display. We want to set it twice. We can already see that it looks a lot better. So you can see, actually, we almost might want to get rid of this diagonal right here. Let's go ahead and let's do that because you can see it's sort of causing a crease. So let's go ahead and let's just get rid of that real quick. So we're just going to come over here. We want to dissolve this edge. And then we're just going to go ahead and we're going to quickly dissolve the vertices that were a part of it. So now if we come over here and we apply our mesh smooth now it's looking absolutely fabulous and we come up over here we throw an edit mesh on top and we select near enough where the centers would be where the poles would have been sure something like that why not we do the same thing we do a five point we'll throw on an aggressive relax we'll do 64 points as before you can see that it doesn't cause any wrinkling or bumps whatsoever. So again, it took less than half an hour to put that together. Very quick, very quick and dirty, yet surprisingly effective retopology method. That is my aggressive retopology. All right, that's all for now.